Welcome to the Executive Member Decision Session for Economy and Strategic Planning, Monday the 18th of November. Uh, just running through the agenda. Declarations of interest, item one. I don't have anything that isn't already included in the Register of Interest that is published on the Council website. Um, minutes, item two. And this is a meeting held on the 17th of October. And so there, I'm happy to sign them. Made a lot of decisions, didn't I? Thank you. All right. Public participation. We, I don't believe, have any no, members of the no. public or members of council registered to speak. Uh, so that brings us on to item four, local industrial strategy. Thank you, Executive Member. So the report in front of you basically updates you on uh, the progress towards the development of local industrial strategies by the York, North Yorkshire Striding and uh, Lee City Region uh, Enterprise Partnership. Uh, the report basically sets out how the emerging list priorities align to and support local priorities in York as defined by the council plan and supposed as a basis for a council response to the two documents which are subject to that board approval. Uh, in terms of officer analysis, both uh, leaders align strongly with the council's local priorities, although the report does highlight specific areas that the exec member might want the council to focus on when formally responding to the consultations on the list uh, draft priorities. So for the York and North Yorkshire list, this might be around the need for a more ambitious goal on climate change, given the local ambitions. Uh, it could also be around the need to invest in infrastructure that, uh, that drives sustainability, as well as recognising York's innovation strengths in the bioeconomy, uh, and also the importance of promoting enterprise and ambition amongst young people as well. Uh, for the city region, this might be around, uh, again, the importance of investing in and encouraging sustainable and active travel, uh, securing the economic benefits of a fast rail network, mm. especially given York's strength in this area, uh, and while uh, a bigger focus on uh, addressing skill shortages in the health and social care sector, especially given that the city region want, the, uh, want their health care to be their main kind of uh, big idea for their local industrial strategy of a way of promoting growth uh, and driving investment opportunities. Uh, so the report basically sets out two recommendations. Uh, the first is for the executive member to consider the content of the two letters and what the council response should be uh, as set out on the paper. And then the second recommendation would be to delegate formal response to the corporate director for economy in place to make sure that the council formally responds uh, into the Liz development process given the short time scales uh, that we face at the moment. Thank you. Right, thank you. And just to note, there have been a number of uh, consultation sessions run, some in your, some nearby, yes. um, for councillors and other partners to, to feed into. I thought um, they've been um, very comprehensive in their approach. Um, I think it's worth spelling out that um, any changes to the LEP geography have come at the instigation of Her Majesty's Treasury and not by the City of York Council, which recognises that it uh, has businesses that both face to North Yorkshire as well as those that face to West Yorkshire and, and Leeds. Um, so it's relevant that we are feeding into both consultations. Um, I think that uh, if we look at paragraph 8, um, then that's a, a key starter for City of York Council. Um, looking at the issue of maintaining employment within the city, 
Um, it is vital that we maintain the um, critical mass of rail employment within the city. Um, and I understand that there are uh, discussions ongoing to ensure that uh, with the changes in buildings around the vicinity that uh, companies are not left without office space to maintain their operations. Um, that's, a, I think, a key one with um, redevelopments in the vicinity of the station. The rail companies tend to like to be low, located within walking distance of railway station, and uh, it is important that, uh, that they work together, but I, having spoken to a number of partners, that that is appreciated across the piece, uh, and that the Chamber of Commerce are doing what they can to, to assist with that. Um, clearly there will be some change due to a different understanding of the franchise process, if there is a franchise process for, for running the rail network, but it still needs people to operate it, so that's uh, an important factor. Um, in terms of skills shortages, uh, it, I thought it very telling the messages that I received at the Jobs Fair at Aiken Parish Hall. There were a number of companies there for whom recruitment um, in the context of high levels of employment within York were a, an ongoing pressure for them. Um, and they were in the care sector, hospitality, uh, inter interested in re retail as well. So I think that's important that uh, that aspect is, is captured. And it does link in with the, the issue that came up at uh, the consultation held in the summer. Um, it's a very hot time in the um, Priory Street Centre, mm -hmm. the York Harrogate line, as well as the York to Selby line as well, for rail travel. Um, and those are transport issues that really do impact on, on the city. Um, in terms of ensuring that all residents are benefiting from the uh, strong economy. Is there something that uh, can be wrapped in, in there to, to Absolutely. develop that? Yes, so for both, uh, both labs have been quite strong on pushing the inclusive growth message and making sure that all residents across the region benefit from the strong, the strong economy that they want to create. So that is very much in line with the council's own thinking around its forthcoming uh, economic strategy and making sure that all residents of the city do benefit from the economic growth that we see in the city and, we, and that we're looking to create as well. Mm. Another point of linkage, I think, is the comments you made around um, the increased focus on sustainability yes. in the in the wino response and that ties very much to the comments you just made about skills so the same skills mm. challenges and shortages are likely to there about sustainable construction and sustainable yes. energy uh, well i think um, I'm, I'm very aware of uh, discussions that are ongoing with your college in terms of uh, a couple of meetings with their news principal uh, on construction training and the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce are involved as well, just to understand now that the Council has established Passive House as the standard as to how many other companies there for um, the demonstration that this is the dire direction of travel and therefore that's the expectation of skills. And the nature of skills and qualifications in the construction industry is still based around bricks and mortar, not about modern methods of construction or sustainable construction. So I think potentially a part of what we might want to add into that element of the uh, local industrial strategy consultation 
is that that needs to be raised at, raised at a national level. Um, absolutely. And in terms of the um, residents' jobs, the inclusive mm. growth aspects, the sectors that you talked about in terms of the skills shortages are the key sectors, really, in terms of inclusive growth in York. And I think it's pleasing to see those also recognised in the local, certainly the York and North Yorkshire local industrial strategy as key yeah. sectors to think about in inclusive growth terms. So it's, there's good alignment. So it is vital that there, that there are performance indicators that this can be measured and demonstrated that um, time and effort and public money um, is included in that and certainly uh, ensuring that all the funding that is available for apprenticeships is spent rather than returned to, to Treasury, whoever uh, is running that. So I think that um, the range of apprenticeships, um, I certainly learned a lot last week at the Business Week, um, so the, the different types of ways of tapping into the apprenticeship levy funding um, is important for all companies to, to understand, and that's a, a selling um, point for the, for the council to get that message through. I appreciate that there are teams and I'm grateful for the efforts that uh, were put in by officers both around this table and uh, elsewhere in the council to show that the council is proactively doing what it can to support the local economy and businesses. Um, there are new members of staff at York St John in terms of the business um, connections with the business community and I hope that uh, we will very much uh, work with them to Draw that in. I understand that you've got meetings with them. I've already met the new. I've already met the new director. There. Yes. Um, so I think in terms of sustainability, the wide range of, of jobs. Um, therefore, ensuring that renewable power is a is a key aspect. Just we become more self-sufficient in resources and. Um, Linking in with the work on the system, uh, in the circular economy, that's, that's a key issue at the moment, and I think that uh, it's important to draw out the potential in the, the range of jobs. I think there's always the tendency to uh, misdescribe all of these as um, uh, graduate or white lab coat. Type jobs, but actually, there's there's a much greater breadth. But recognising the need for a, a a just transition to the new economy, recognising that some some jobs will fall by the wayside, and therefore um, we can't just let uh, organisations go to the wall without there being an opportunity for retraining uh, for those individuals, especially as we're all having to work longer. Uh, Potentially until we're 75. So uh, I think that's a, an, a, a key aspect. Uh, um, getting around sustainably links in with, with our, you know, um, it is important for the industrial strategy, whilst including dueling of the outer ring road factors in support for the city in re allocating road space to sustainable transport. Um, it would be good to draw out the um, jobs that were created locally by switching to electric vehicles. Uh, and that itself is a huge infrastructure implication on yeah. making sure that everyone has the ability to charge uh, said vehicles, that it will have a, a huge impact on um, the air quality as well as the carbon footprint. Um, anything to add on sustainability? I've got 
consideration of the development of um, accounting for uh, carbon in standard business cases for funding? Yes. Um, we did have a carbon management programme, 2008, five years after that, so it would be helpful to include that. Um, hopefully they will introduce something as counterproductive as the um, landfill tax, mm. uh, which was a rather inhibitor to um, funding for alternative uses rather than a driver. Um, in terms of a better start for children and young people, there was a, a very extensive social mobility conference held recently. Um, and I think it, from a personal aspect, the uh, work that's going into school readiness so that pupils are starting at the level of, of understanding which they're, which they're expected to have um, is important to, and it, it's, it's not an, an assumption that, uh, that we can make, but uh, it does have a huge implication on the attainment gap. Um, and ensuring that there's aspiration um, in schools so that long before pupils are taking options that they've had the opportunity to see the range of, of, of uh, opportunities that there are. Um, would like to see that. I think it's mm -hmm. a very important aspect of that. Penny, do you, do you want to check in? Uh, I, I don't know what to say about that really. Um, in in terms of attainment, yes, I think it's absolutely essential okay. that he's given us opportunity and we're given the platform. So to I think it's looking at the the ways in which we can work with the in, the investment in inclusive growth, mm -hmm. which it, it itself tried to draw. Um, <clears throat> the Leeds City region into that process uh, they, they, their response was oh well it's part of a, a skills commission that was being chaired by uh, uh, the leader of Bradford but I'm not, that was expected to run for two years which I would hope that we were starting to develop some of those um, aspects a lot earlier in terms of work done with getting a school ready and then secondary school ready, because that seems to be a, a mood in some other local authority areas. Um, but then, you know, lifelong learning being truly accessible um, and that companies um, recognised the benefit to themselves as well as the council and other agencies to, to help employees to access training because it helped the company and helped the individual because there is a the, the issue with a lot with 97.5 percent of york's businesses being the smes that there is a reluctance sometimes to invest in time because they might go off and get another job but if there's uh, a an overall availability of, of skills training then it's something that everybody's tapping into and there's a wider pool of resource being created. I mean, that comes on to the next theme of good health and well-being. So it kind of relates back to the point you made earlier that we're all going to have to work for longer. Uh, so we need to be fit and well enough to do so. But it also increases the economic produ productivity of the, um, the region if we are looking at job design to enable mm. older people to remain engaged effectively in the workforce. There's another theme there about not just about young people and training, but actually old people and training and jobs changing, and us all need, need to be able to repurpose ourselves to the, the next yeah. career, yes. is, a portfolio career as you get older. That's not necessarily linked to your current employer. So yeah. The challenge is if you're working for an SME and you need to be doing a completely different job, at the moment there is very little funding and scope to support that, but there's something that mm. probably, I would suggest we probably need to find a mechanism to... Um, to at least help people in that. So that's something that we could be working on 
on our own as well as feeding that into the consultation on the local industrial strategy? I, certainly, I, I think that the funding for such initiatives probably comes from a larger um, a, 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 a government area, so we, yeah. we need to make sure it's yeah. in the local industrial strategy, but there are possibly things we can do but ourselves in, locally. But, yes. yes, whilst they get the money through the door from central government, I think in terms of tailoring it to our economy, which is yes. quite distinct from most cities in the north of England. Yes. Therefore, it's giving you that, 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 local, that local experience. Um, but there's a portfolio of careers, yes. Um, so, safer communities, um, technology. It was a, an interesting discussion on um, technology hubs, and incubation, and accelerators. Yes. Um, I've had some correspondence with the university, and then certainly the new vice chancellor. His presentation on Friday was very strong in yes. in that. Um, so I think there's there's a lot of interest and support from the business community in making sure that York Central delivers um, the delivers for the city rather than it being just a another um, investment. Yep. That could be anywhere that is it's, it's, uh, reflecting in uh, the city and it was very nice to see um, the lady from Reba there mm -hmm. who's very interested in the quality of architecture. Uh, for the York Central. Um, and then we come on to sectoral strengths, which um, item 32, so the rail engineer, rail engineering and technology, digital ICT, financial and professional services, university-led innovation and training, and biotech, particularly data. Those were the items, the categories highlighted in the York Central. Occupy exactly. paper, which has been to a previous executive member decision session, so it's one that uh, we have rehearsed before, um, and it was encouraging to have support, all party support for that. Um, so I think it's uh, something that's gaining um, support from around the city that those are the areas that are, are your, and that interestingly. One of the LEPs is more in tune with some of those things than another LEP, but it demonstrates the benefit of being in two. Mm. Um, so I think that's, that's uh, an important feature. Um, and of course those sectors also came through in the paper that you considered last time mm. on the economic strategy as well. Yes. So there's, there's a lot uh, of ground being covered, um, but I think what is being demonstrated is that there is a very inclusive consultation process going on, that um, all sectors are being involved. It was very interesting on Wednesday, Business Week, starting off with the top 100, and then going on to the Federation of Small Businesses. So it was um, covering both, both ends. And I think that's important for um, a city like York, where yeah, we do have some very big employers, and uh, they have traditionally played a, a big role in the uh, community. Um, but recognising the vast majority of the 7,100 businesses <laughs> um, are relatively small, small mm. enterprises, so uh, it's, it's ensuring that they understand um, what is on offer. Is there going to be a paper on um, how we engage with businesses across the city? We talked about having a, a, a regular newsletter or some, in order that, looking at well, where, do, where do people get their information from? Um, some people from the council website, Yes. So some people get them from labs, some people get them from um, different uh, chamber of commerce, but it's, it's, it's almost 
recognize, it's recognizing that for some people it's just they get bombarded with so much, but if it if it's a brief update from the council, it does have that um, assurity of independence of spirit. We're not selling them anything. Therefore, if there are signposting that we can do, um, then that's an important factor. So is that something that's we are, it's certainly something we're working on. It's not right. something that at the moment there's a concrete plan to bring a paper to one of these sessions on, but it right. could be. Um, and it's certainly picked right. up in the, for instance, the discussions with Make It York around the new service level agreement. So I think over the next few of these meetings, you will be right. seeing that kind of material okay. coming forward, whether it's in a separately titled That's paper on that or not. Well, perhaps we can discuss uh, our next briefing. That the approach to engagement and consultation on the, the new economic strategy, yeah. the, the, the extent to which we need to uh, to expand the way and, and look carefully at the way that we deliver that so that we really get underneath the skin of the incl inclusive growth question as well. It cannot be just a consultation for business. No. It's got to be no. a consultation with the people of York. So the proposal that you looked at at your last meeting about having the, uh, the business forum and the people's, people's panel, panel will enable us yeah. to have those conversations yeah. in, a, in a different way than perhaps we've done in the past. I think the, the, the real people's panel is important to get the first-hand experience of things like access to childcare and understanding. Uh, some of the businesses um, that had reported success in recruitment was in uh, understanding, um, in particular, some of the return to work um, aspects for women with children that, that by um, tailoring work hours, um, that there was a greater opportunity to recruit at a higher uh, qualification and therefore it also answered the question as to productivity mm. that if we can get um, access to more productive jobs then it, it helps with the employment figures um, and also average wage which there has been some very positive news locally um, but it, it did raise as many questions with me as um, it answered that uh, it, how it was just understanding how that 13% increase had been achieved when I'm sure that most people have not had a 13% wage rise and therefore it, it's really understanding that because across all of the, the lab work, the, the productivity gap has been um, a key um, element of certainly central government economic development angst that, well, if everyone would grow in the same uh, rate as the South East, then we'd be up here. But um, looking at the figures for the centre of cities, it's, uh, some of those measurements are very difficult to replicate uh, without having an oil field, because um, Aberdeen yeah. seemed to be up there in the top 6% most productive cities in Europe, um, but that's a, particular, that's a particular um, situation, but it was interesting that yeah. really as a, as a country, um, we were not producing the productivity of, so northern Italian mm -hmm. cities. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's some key aspects in, on, is really getting to grips with, well, well why aren't we reaching our full potential? Because um, I think that uh, recognising the pressures in house prices, that uh, it's seen as an as a inhibitor to retention of graduates from both universities to the city um, if they if they are retained. There's a point in that about um, the sustainability of an economic model that is predicated on constant growth. There was a very good tune by Muse on the second law of thermodynamics that, uh, you know, you, you, yep. you, you know, you, you cannot keep on growing. Keep on growing. Yeah. Uh, and therefore it's having a different model which acknowledges um, the finite nature of resources and the capacity of the planet to 
process waste. I think that the three principles are set out in para paragraph 37 about inclusive growth mm. being smart in terms of use of technology but also on, uh, minimising the impact of climate change all give you a picture there that's about the right kind of growth that actually does feed the whole city mm. and isn't just predicating on getting bigger and bigger and bigger because that's also not commensurate with our, our local plan. There was a really... Or uh, assigning it to the, to the climate... Platinum Emergency Scrutiny had a really good conversation last week about uh, in-work poverty and the gender pay gap, which got into a lot of those issues about uh, uh, the nature of the economic growth that we want. Mm. And we mm. committed to taking back another session as part of the consultation on the economic strategy so that we could get into that in, in more detail. And there were some very interesting speakers brought to the table to try and uh, help inform that debate. Mm. And, and uh, John, on the point, uh, I met with Councillor Smalley, uh, with Justin Frontry Foundation, Justin Frontry Housing, which was good to, uh, to re-establish those things after quite a long time, um, so that uh, I think understanding the basis of those the, those knotty problems, mm. which are um, very uh, are very pronounced in York. They probably affect all parts of the city, both city regions, but they're they're, they're more pronounced uh, in in the city in New York, and therefore understanding the understanding the issue first, and then policy changes that would be needed to to deliver the outcomes that we would want. I think that's, uh, and we wouldn't be able to achieve that on our own, which is you know, why the economic strategy developed with partners is that. It does rely on a lot of other um, businesses and uh, organisations to deliver on that. But I think if we're all living the same direction, which we appear to be doing on York Central, a few individuals accepted, um, then I think that's progress. Um, in terms of the investment in rail links, um, conscious that the York to Harrogate line is, has been sitting on the cusp of investment that might overcome some of the quaint Victorian practices that guarantee rail safety on that uh, particular line. Yes, so the York and Shortshoes riding left our uh, keeping fingers crossed for a positive announcement uh, by next month from Northern Rail. Uh, hopefully they can secure uh, two trains per hour, uh, how we get to York, which, as you said, will make a, a big difference to commuters using that line. Yeah, I think if that line were elsewhere in the region, it, it wouldn't be quite like it is. But it, it is inhibiting uh, the access to, to jobs. Um, so I think with the... Uh, Consultation that's taken place, there's been a lot of, of opportunity to feed in. So, mm. just on that point, um, so based on the comments that we've discussed, um, the because uh, we're, I find it all very curious that you know, just whatever government is going through at the moment, it's still insisting on the timetable for this consultation, so that's rather um, driving uh, the response from the uh, City of York Council. So if we modify number uh, recommendation two to um, delegate the formal response to the Corporate Director of Economy and Place in consultation with uh, the Executive Member, then, um, then that, that can be um, that can fit into the process. But part of the reason for having the decision session today was to ensure that information that had come forward during business week, because we've, we've all been out there talking to, yeah. to people, um, uh, that that was the opportunity to, to really get in information from the horse's mouth. Um, and also it gave um, all council the opportunity to chip in if they felt that something was being particularly missed out. I think it would be regrettable if there was a line of work that we were not pursuing, but I think it's, it's uh, 
uh, I think that's uh, that's been covered. So I'm grateful to all the work that's been done to ensure that uh, in what has turned out to be quite a complex way of doing it, that we are getting the York voice through, and that this is evidenced and it's part of uh, the work that we are doing um, in general. So thank you very much. Okay. Right, so let's start with item four, and then item five. Thank you. Um, so this paper is about the renewal ballots for the York Business Improvement District or bid, um, and is seeking approval from the executive member for the ballot um, to go ahead. Um, and the processes that are needed to happen for it to take place in November 2020. Um, this will be the second term for the bid, mm. um, which will end um, on, the, on March uh, 2021, um, at which point the new ballot will take over and things will begin from April 2021 for their second term. Um, it's, I've noted in the, in the paper that a lot has been achieved by the bid in the three and a half years since they began. Um, and work is already going to start to uh, proceed to this second ballot, um, including consultation with levy payers within the bid geography in, in the city centre. Um, there's further detail in the paper if required. So um, there are various recommendations from the executive member, including um, that support is expressed for the York bid and the work that they have been doing, um, that the uh, stages and timescales re required to implement the decision outlined in the recommendations are noted, and we would be looking to take a further report to executive uh, in spring, yes. uh, particularly to, to detail the bid prospectus which is being developed by them at the moment, uh, and the service level agreements between the City of York Council and them by way of baseline agreement, um, and the role of Make It York within that mix. Um, also, we would be acting as a collection agent for the levy, as we did last time. Mm. Um, and then the final recommendation would be um, that we support the exploration of additional recompense from the bid for work carried out by the teams here to gather in that levy collection and ongoing work that takes place throughout the year for them. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, so this is part of it. nationally the mechanism for bids is written down and it therefore is. this is a pulling through the mechanism which we would yes. need to do in any case. Um, yeah, it's an act of parliament which sets out in great detail what we have to do. So it, it's just to rehearse that we are not inventing this ourselves, no. No. That, th th that there is a process that is uh, determined by my Act of Parliament um, and I think uh, I definitely put on record my appreciation for the work that the bid has done. Uh, years ago it's the sort of work that the Council would have done but there has been a transformation of our finances um, and notwithstanding the huge debate about the high street and um, business rates, uh, some of which were discussed today in other places. Um, <coughs> without it, um, the pressures of maintaining the public realm in the city centre would have been more severe. Um, and I think it's helpful to have an organisation which is business led. We are part of it. Um, and it's always challenging, um, but that makes for a uh, stronger solution. Uh, so the uh, further report taken to executive is a recognition that um, this sole executive member can't make all the decisions themselves and isn't trying to, but it's to recognise the constitutional position. Um, so that would go forward in, in spring 2020. Um, the operation, the arrangement for the operations about that, I would take to be pretty prescribed process 
It is, yes. There is a, a specific timeline that is right. set out. Yes. But it's in order that we, we keep in with that timeline. We've, That's right. we've got the, the paper today. And the final recommendation support exploration of additional recompense for the work carried out by the council. Um, you mentioned in terms of recovery of um, bid levy payment. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there is other work that we are... There is additional enforcement work that takes place um, and there is also work around um, keeping the databases of hereditaments up to date as well. So the business units that we are charging um, for on behalf of the bid. So there is a lot of background work that goes on over the course of the year. No, that will be in discussion with them for That's some right. time. Yeah. But uh, as this is, um, as mentioned, a process prescribed by Act of Parliament, we're following that as well as acknowledging the benefit of the city for the business improvement district being there. Yeah. So thank you very much for that and have a good one to read the paper. Right. I think the recommendations uh, and I haven't <coughs> seen any uh, correspondence on that so people must be relatively content with it. Thank you very much and that brings us on to agenda item 6 which is procurement supporting local business. Yes, thank you. So the report just uh, provides a bit of an update on the council's procurement policies as they currently stand, particularly in relation to those small and medium-sized businesses uh, within York. It goes through, um, within paragraph 7, we've, um, we've set out some of the things that we've already done, things like simplifying our documentation, regular supplier engagement events, ensuring yeah. the local supply chain, but clearly we recognise that there's always more that can be done. We've also included in paragraph 10 a variety of other measures that the council, a variety of other ways that the council supports local business, such as offering 10 day payment terms yeah. um, and a range of advice, information, and support that's provided from across the council, not just within procurement. I've included some stats around the amount that the council spends with local SMEs both within a YO postcode and within Yorkshire and Humber. And then finally I've set out some of the things where we are still still work in progress really um, right. and where perhaps uh, you might wish to influence the, uh, the direction of travel and the work that we're doing. So we continue to communicate with local business and try to identify new ways to engage directly with suppliers in the York area. Um, we attended events at York Business Week to engage yes. directly with the suppliers, uh, both current and prospective. And um, as well as in trying to engage further with the local Federation of Small Business, the local Chamber of Commerce, to understand those barriers that local SMEs might be facing mm. if they want to work for the council, or for that matter, for any public sector organisation in the city. So there may be occasions where um, a supplier is offering something that we don't actually buy, but we can try and facilitate an introduction and events with the university, with the health sector, the whole of the public sector in the city. And we'll also be considering over the coming months how we can help fulfil climate change obligations through the procurement process and continue to improve some of the social value that's achieved. Okay, thank you for preparing this report, which I, I asked for, um, really to draw t together the activities that were ongoing that, that people may not have been aware of. Um, I think in terms of the supplier events, the one I attended was very well received. But, uh, uh, it was a good turnout. Um, I think one uh, thing that people did need help with was how to complete the forms. Um, and it, it is something that at the um, consultation for the uh, local industrial strategy, the one ran the, the groups I was in was with the Federation of Small Businesses, and they suggested that there was a panel to consider um, the wording um, 
and into some of their own discussions with the Chamber of Commerce. So I think that might be something that if there is an opportunity to have um, fresh pairs of eyes looking at these forms, that um, that's helpful to ensure that um, small businesses don't feel excluded. That um, So I think that would be an additional recommendation, which I think is, is an appetite to support. And, you know, you, I appreciate that you want to, to, to help businesses on that. The, the other aspect is on understanding when there's a major project, which um, the contract is awarded to a, a, a larger business, how subcontractors and, and small businesses in the city can access that, and that we demonstrate that, that they have, so we put an expectation on companies for um, doing that, for producing apprenticeships, for um, the way in which um, items are procured. So I think that's important to include on the council website. Yeah. Because I remember the um, session at your college on doing business with the council for the for for this headquarters building. So. Um, and it was uh, reassuring that uh, I was having my words quoted back to me by suppliers saying, we've heard this, that you're saying this. Uh, so I think that, that really did help to, to get through that we really did mean it. Yeah. Uh, but it is important to, to be able to publish those figures and collect them. So that's a, a key, um, key aspect of demonstrating support for local businesses. Um, and I think that... Where, where we can show as an authority, whether it's with trading standards or your, you know, your team or uh, other teams, that we are um, helping to deliver solutions as well as where we need to uh, ensure that there is a level playing field um, for um, uh, businesses that, uh, that we actually do that because I think that's certainly from the conversation that I've had is what businesses expect us to do um, in in the way that, that we work. So I think this this is very helpful. So with the additional recommendation on the, the, the panel for viewing the paperwork, I'm happy to uh, agree uh, the recommendations as printed. Okay, um, brings us on to item seven, urgent business. I don't have any recorded there for thank you all for coming. <laughs> <laughs>